I will tell you a little bit more about what everyone is celebrating right now. Uh, if you don't know about the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, you are to be forgiven. In all of the media coverage on international war and brewing dangers, we have not seen much mention of the only realistic solution for nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons which pose the greatest existential threat to humanity, including through posing the most acute existential threat to our climate through and global food supply. The solution is the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which entered into force two years ago this week. Also known as the TPNW or the Ban Treaty, it is the first and only global treaty that categorically prohibits nuclear weapons, everything to do with nuclear weapons, while also providing a framework for their total elimination. It is historic for one other reason, in seeking not only to prevent future harm, but to address past harm as well. It is the first ever treaty relating to nuclear weapons to provide for assistance to communities and for remediation to environments affected by nuclear weapons use and testing. If you don't know about it, why do you think that is? Who is working against the treaty? Who has an interest in convincing you that the status quo works just fine for you, that these weapons protect the US, but should not protect other countries and that a nuclear attack is survivable. So-called nuclear deterrence, a policy advanced by a small number of actors in a small number of states, is not sustainable. True experts on international security, science, and health care calculate that deterrence policies have sleptwalked humanity into the highest risk ever faced from nuclear weapons, higher than at the height of the Cold War, and that it will get worse quickly without a major shift. That shift is this treaty, is the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. It is our best hope, likely our only hope. It has the support of the vast majority of countries in the world, and it has even in a short time already been used to change norms and behavior, to spark divestment campaigns and legislative actions throughout the world to pressure nuclear armed countries, including this one, to move to a more sane path. My name is Seth Sheldon and I work for the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, ICANN. We are a global coalition of non-governmental organizations, 162 of them right now in 110 countries. In 2017, ICANN was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for our efforts to raise awareness about the humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons and for our efforts to advance the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And this is it. This is our Nobel Peace Prize. We share this with all our partner organizations and all those who advocate for the universalization and the implementation of the TPNW. Today we are celebrating the 145 countries that support the TPNW, two-thirds of the world states, the 92 that have signed it already the most recent last week, and the 68 that have already become states parties to this treaty, that are member states, in such a short time, and who are taking forward now implementation of this new international law. Today we prepare for the TPNW's second meeting of states parties. We had the first one in June in Vienna, Austria. The second one will be here in New York at UN headquarters in November. New Yorkers, by the way, support this treaty, and they should. After all, it was here where nuclear weapons began. It's called the Manhattan Project for a reason. And many New York communities, primarily in black and brown and underserved New York City communities, continue to suffer from the radioactive legacy of that program, many without anyone realizing it, many New Yorkers not knowing this. So, in December 2021, the New York City Council, through the advocacy of the New York Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, a partner organization of ICANN, the New York City Council adopted this great package of legislation that, among other things, joins New York City to the ICANN City's appeal, through which cities and nuclear armed countries declare their support for their country to join the TPNW. The package of legislation does a number of other things, I won't get into it in too much detail, but it reaffirms New York City status as a nuclear weapons free zone. Many do not know in New York that prior to 1980s legislation creating the nuclear weapons free zone in New York, that New York City was surrounded by nuclear missiles 
We had a ring of bases that made New York City more of a target. Uh, it also, the legislation establishes a city advisory committee on nuclear disarmament to recommend policy and educational programming, the very first of its kind. And it calls on New York City, not least, to divest from the companies that produce and maintain nuclear weapons. Many do not know that New York City has approximately $475 million of public pension funds that are invested in those companies, and we can get it out. And the city council has agreed to already do that. Our next speaker, we'll later hear from someone else from NICAN who can tell you a little bit more about it, but visit NICAN.NYC to learn more about the New York work, and visit ICANW.org, the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons website, to learn more about ICANN and the TPNW. Today, we are grateful for the remarkable progress being made by this treaty in the short time, with the progress in implementing it, with universalizing it, and for your support to see the rest of the world join it. Thank you very much.